I'm doing well. So, Tara, right now we're at Sunny Hill Elementary School in uh, we're in the Barrington District 220, which is actually Carpentersville, right? Yes. yes. So we're in Carpentersville, and I don't know if you can see everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning and sharing your insights into Google and how you use it in your classroom. Yeah, definitely. I love your guys' Google colors in the background. <laughs> it's, very, it's very colorful. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful library. Uh, so we thought, we thought if you could take a, take a couple minutes to kind of share some of the uh, successes and some of the uh, challenges that you guys have had using Google Apps. And then uh, I was introducing Google Classroom to them. So if you have any experience using Google Classroom uh, with some of your students, that'd be great, too, to share some of those experiences. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> what do you what do you think? Uh, what what type of successes have you had with some of your elementary students? Um. So, uh, first, for clarification, what is elementary considered? What grade levels? So we're we're K through five right now. We're K through five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a lag time. Okay. Um, so I know on our end, we're just getting into like using Google Docs, um, not quite in the student collaboration as in multiple students on the same document, but more getting used to like logging in, um, using Google Docs to like type up um, what they would normally handwrite um, and to publish their work and then to share it with the classroom teacher. Um, fourth grade has just started getting into that. And um, one of our teachers is actually playing around with using Google Classroom, which kind of streamlines everything, um, makes it easier to share copies of documents. Instead of having students go and click make a copy, it automatically like, makes that copy for them. Very cool. Have you guys had a, in terms of using Google Classrooms, uh, I guess has there been any challenges like getting kids signed up for it or you know there is like a public viewing section how have you dealt with uh, where everybody can see the posts that students are making especially with like you said a fourth grade class so since we're we've only just started dabbling in Google Classroom in like the last week or two um, we're still kind of working out the discussion thread part um, I know that some of our junior high teachers have expressed concern and saying like, oh, I've got to stay up at night and like keep track of this, that, and the other. Um, but if you kind of give clear directions as to here's what the expectation is and let students know that you can see everything, then I think that like students can better regulate themselves. Theoretically. <laughs> Theoretically, yeah. <laughs> so how about any challenges that you guys have face so far uh, using Google Apps? Um, the biggest challenge that we have at the elementary level is students logging in. Uh, we're now almost in October and because some classrooms use the technology more than other classrooms do, um, those classrooms who use Google Apps on a regular basis um, have students exposed to logging in with their username and password more regularly so that it doesn't take a whole class period for everyone to log in. Uh, those first few times is challenging, um, but what I've seen in a lot of cases is that if you have students kind of collaborate with the login process to help each other, then it takes the weight and the burden off of the teacher to go around and make sure that everything is right. Uh, do you guys have any questions for Tara in terms of any of your concerns or uh, experiences that you guys have had? Uh, you were so much we're in infancy right now. I'm not sure what questions you can ask. Right, right. But I'd like to know that this is Sure, sure. What have, you, what have you found about the kids' response to using it? And are they feeling about it? And the what? How are they feeling about it, about using Google, the different apps? Um, honestly, from what I've seen, like the kids love it. It's like another, it's it's a more technology driven outlet for them to um, collaborate, for them to write, for them to just use technology. And like with uh, with younger students, if they get on the computer and they're doing more than just a game, then like 
it's great because you actually see like the learning going on and it's it's fun it, 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 yeah, sorry it's fun it's exciting and it's something new and so even students I would say as young as second grade love it um, we have Chromebooks here and for the first few weeks of school I was working with kindergarten to get them used to using the mouse so that wasn't as challenging as most people would think like once you teach like the clicking and like not touching the screen because it's not a touch screen device, um, they get it. I know another thing that we're working towards is like working with digital text so students can annotate the text right on there. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've been incorporating at all or how does that work for you? We're starting to incorporate that now. Um, we use we have a couple of classes who are using Newzella or, or News ELA. I don't know how they want to be called. <laughs> um, and that's really great. Um, everything is aligned to Common Core standards. And uh, are you guys familiar with the tool? A little bit. Well, tell us okay. about some of us others. So how it works is you get basically you get free accounts for yourself and for students and you can track students progress in reading real news articles the really cool thing about it is that you assign articles they read it and it's all articles that are nonfiction that are based on like current events well some of them are kind of dated because they they have a large library of everything that they've published in the last year or so so some things are from like 2013 but you have this library that is Common Core aligned. It tells you what standards. You can search by standards. You can search by topic, and you can search by grade level. Um, it's really great, I would say, for I've seen it work really well in second grade classes, but um, it's more geared towards like third through fifth grade. And when they're reading the text, they on the right hand side they can choose their lexile level. Um, so they can make the text harder or easier as they're reading it. And on the teacher end, you can see what they chose. So it's more student, like student guided learning, if you will. When they're reading the text, some of them, some of the pieces have quizzes attached to them. And so they'll read the text and the quiz questions align with what's, ex um, what's expected in PARC, where they have to go back and refer to the text. Um, it gives them the option to annotate, which is really easy in um, Newzella. Um, they can go and highlight, move pieces around, um, answer part one and part two of a question, and see the results at the end. So that's like one tool that like we're starting to get more teachers on board with using here, and I've seen it work in other schools really just great. That's a, under Google Apps, Newzella. Is it one of the apps? There, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, can you it's, it's a third-party website. However, I, uh, there might be an app within the like the Chrome Web Store. I'm not sure. <laughs> right. But it is a third-party website. And so, can, when students um, on Newzella, like I said, they annotate text, can, so they can save that into Google Classroom, so that you can go in and see each student's different and how they annotated that text. Do you think? For Newzella, probably not because it is a third party. Um, but what you could do is in Google Classroom, you can create a like a you can you can create a doc shared in Classroom, and then there's an option where you can have um, it to automatically make a copy for each student. And so when students go and get their copy, they can then annotate in there. And then with Google Docs, you can actually um, comment on the side and have like a, a dialogue with the student in the document. Nice. But you can yeah. do that within the website, right? Yeah. Say that one more time. You were saying earlier that you could see what the kids were doing inside that website. You could see that? Or for, news, for News ELA, you can. You have like a progress monitoring tool to see like what stories they read, how they're doing on the assessments, and I believe also what Lexile level they're uh, reading at. So you just load your classroom into that, right? You right. Each of those kids gets an account, and then from there you can see that? Yes. And then you actually, and you can assign stories. Um, and I'm at the News ELA site right now. There is actually a sign in with Google. So if students click on that, they can log in with their Google accounts. Oh, makes that easier. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 
Uh, do we have any other questions for Tara? Or? Well, thanks, Tara. We, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, nice, it's nice to see you again, too. And if you're going to be at EdCamp, I'll be at EdCamp tomorrow morning uh, in the morning. So <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have to see you there tomorrow morning. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep. Take it easy. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, so next.